So today we are diving ever deeper into that sweet nectarian ocean of the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter number 15, the Pandavas retire timely, text number 7. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya 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 Yet Sankshayat Drupada Geham Upagatanam Ragyam Svayangvara Muke Smara Dharmadhanam Teja Pritam Kalu Maya Abhihata Cha Matsya Sajikritena Danusha Adigata Cha Krishna Yat Sangshaya Drupada Geham Upagatanam Yat Sangshaya Drupada Geham Upagatanam Ragyam Svayang Varamuke Smaradur Madanam Ragyam Svayang Varamuke Smaradur Madanam Te Jauritam Kalu Mayabe Maya bihitascha matya Sajji kritena dadusha gagat digatatsa krishna Yam Sagshayandra Pantage Yam Upaga. I guess that's how I remember it. Yat Sangshayadrupa the Gay Yam Upagatanam. Yat Sangshayadrupa the Gay Yam Upagatanam. Rag Yam Swayang Varamukes Maradur Madanam. Rag Yam Swayang Varamukes Maradur Madanam. Te jauritam kallu maya bihitascha matsya Sajji kritena danusha digataccha krishna Yat sangshaya drupada geham upagatanam Yat sangshaya drupada geham upagatanam Ragyang Svayang Varamuke Smaradur Madanam Ragyang Svayang Varamuke Smaradur Madanam Te Jauhritam Kallu Maya Bihitascha Matsya Te Jauhritam Kallu Maya Bihitascha Matsya Sajji Kritena Darusha Digataccha Krishna Sajji Kritena Darusha Digataccha Krishna Yat, yat, by whose merciful, sang shrayat, by strength, Drupada Geham, in the palace of King Drupada. Upagatanam All those assembled Sitchki kuitu se biach sembrali 
Ragyam of the princes. Svayang Varamukhe on the occasion of the selection of the bride and groom. Smaradurmadanam All lusty in thought. Teja Power Hritam Vanquished Kalu As it were Maya By me Abihata Pierced Cha also Matsya the fish target Sadji Kritena by equipping the bow Danusha by that bow also Adhi Gata gained Cha also Krishna Draupadi Translation by Srila Prabhupada only by his merciful strength was I able to vanquish all the lusty princes assembled at the palace of King Drupada for the selection of the bridegroom. With my bow and arrow I could pierce the fish target and thereby gain the hand of Draupadi. Prevod. Само благодарение на неговата милост и сила аз успях да победя всички обладани от поход принцове събрали се в двореца на цар Друпада където трябваше да се избере жених. С стрелата си аз успях да пронижа мишената, една риба, и така спечелих ръката на Драупади. Драупади was the most beautiful daughter of King Drupada, and when she was a young girl, almost all the princes desired her hand. But Drupada Maharaj decided to hand over his daughter to Arjuna only and therefore contrived a peculiar way. There was a fish hanging on the inner roof of the house under the protection of a wheel. The condition was that out of the princely order one must be able to pierce the fish's eyes through the wheel of protection and no one would be allowed to look up at the target. On the ground there was a water pot in which the target and wheel were reflected and one had to fix his aim towards the target by looking at the trembling water in the pot. Maharaj Drupada well knew that only Arjuna or alternatively Karna could successfully carry out the plan. But still, he wanted to hand his daughter to Arjuna. And in the assembly of princely order, when Drishtadumna, the brother of Draupadi, introduced all the princes to his grown-up sister, Karna was also present in the game. But Draupadi tactfully avoided Karna as the rival of Arjun and she expressed her desires through her brother, Tristadumna, that she was unable to accept anyone who was less than a Chatriya. The Vaishyas and the Shudras are less important than the Chatriyas. Karna was known as the son of a carpenter, a Shudra. So Draupadi avoided Karna by this plea. When Arjuna, in the dress of a poor Brahman, pierced the difficult target, Everyone was astonished, and all of them, especially Karna, offered a stiff fight to Arjuna. But as usual, by the grace of Lord Krishna, he is able to emerge very successful in the princely fight, and thus gain the valuable hand of Krishna, or Draupadi. Arjuna was lamentingly remembering the incident on the, in the absence of the Lord, by whose strength only he was so powerful. 
коментар. Драпади, била най-красивата дъщеря на цар Дропада и когато била девойка, почти всички принцове купнели за ръката й. Но Дропада Махараджа решил да даде дъщеря си на ръчуна, на никой друг. Затова прибягнал до хитрост. Той качил на тавана една риба, заслонена от едно колело. Условието било принцовете да се опитат да оцелят очите на рибата през колелото, но без да гледат в мишената. На пода бил поставен съд с вода, в който се отразявали рибата и колелото. И кандидатите трябвало да се прицелят, като гледат трепкащото отражение на мишената в съда. Махараджа Дропада знал, че само Арджуна и може би Карна са в състояние да се справят с тези условия. Но той иска да даде дъщеря си единствено на Арджуна. Когато Дрища Дюм на братът на Дралпади представил всички принцове на порасналата си сестра, Карна също бил сред тях. Но Дралпади тактично го отстранила като съперник на Арджуна, предавайки чрез брат си Дрища Дюмна, че няма да приеме никой, който е ониш от Кшатрия. Вайшите и шудрите стоят по-долу от кшатрите, а се знаело, че Карна е син дърводелец на шудра. Под такъв предлог Драупади отхвърлила Карна. Всички останали изумени, когато Арджуна провлечен като беден брамана, оцелил тази толкова трудна мишена. Принцовете и най-вече Карна с ожесточение го нападнали, но както обикновено благодарение на милостта на Бог Кришна, той извоил обляска в победа в битката с принцовете и получил скъпоценната ръка на Кришна Драупад Драупади. Сега, когато Богът вече го нямал, Арджуна тъгувал, като си припомнил тази случка, защото цялата си сила дължава единствено на могъществото на Бога. Шри Чайтанья Манобиштам Стапитам Яна Бутали Свайям Рупагадамайям Дадати Свапатанятикам So, there is one very nice verse. Маре Кришна Ракеке Раке Кришна Маре Кришна wants to kill you No one can protect you. And if Krishna wants to protect you, no one can kill you. Има един много прекрасен стиг, в който се казва, че ако Кришна иска да те убие, никой не може да те защити. И обратно, ако Кришна иска да те закриля, никой не може да те навреди по никакъв начин. So, Arjuna <coughs> was remembering how nicely he was protected by Krishna. И така Арджуна си спомнял колко uh, добре Кришна го закрила. И сега той скърбява поради отсъствието на Кришна. Of course, by that remembrance, that intense lamentation of Krishna's separation, Krishna is present in that. Разбира се, че това помнене и тази интензивна раздяла с Кришна, Кришна присъства. Even though we know that Krishna left Vrindavan and went to Mathura. Въпреки, че знаем, че Кришна е напуснал Вриндаван, за да отиде в Матура. There is that verse um, Vrindavanam Paritjaja Napada Ekam Gachati which means that Krishna never sets even one foot outside of Vrindavan. Just like we know Parit Yajya, Sarva Dharman Parit Yajya, that giving up all of their duties. So, Vrindavanam Parit Yajya, giving up Vrindavan, you see. Napada means not, not even one foot. Napada Ekam. One pada ekam is one foot, and na means not even one foot, and gachati means he goes. He doesn't even go one step outside of Vrindavan. Krishna. Както знаем, думата парите джалото стиха сарва дарман парите джал означава, че изоставя. И в този стих Вриндавана парите джал се казва, че Кришна не напуска Вриндавана, ека падан, дори на една стъпка не излиза от там. So we have to learn from Arjuna how to 
feel separation from Krishna. The Arjuna is teaching us, also the, gop- the gopis are teaching us, how that separation from Krishna. As we were explaining the other day, when the lover meets his beloved, there is great joy and happiness in that meeting. But the love felt in the anguish of separation from the beloved. Is more intense than the love felt in the joy of meeting the beloved. So this is very good thing. Wake up, wake up, wake up. So this is very good thing. If we can feel separation from Krishna. And we can also feel separation from Krishna consciousness as well. That is a very nice song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Aparada Gucci, Shudana Meruchi, Kripa Bole Habe Grido Ye Sancha. You see, he is Kabe Habe Bolo Sei he is lamenting when my offense is ceasing, taste for the name increasing, when in my heart will your mercy shine, when, oh when will that day be mine? <laughs> <coughs> Bhaktivinoda Thakur is lamenting that at the present time I am a nam aparadhi. I am committing so many offenses against the name. But when will that day come? When I will chant the Shuranam. He's feeling some pain of separation from pure chanting. And also Naratam Dastakur. He is saying, Gorango Bolite Habe Pulaka Shahari Hari Hari Volite Nayani Bobaini. He is saying, When will that opportune moment come to me that by chanting Goranga I will feel shivering in my body? Narutam das tako. Pe, kuga, šti dojde tozi moment, kuga tu vaspjave ki ime tu Goranga, šti tjavto mi šte povaze trpki. And when by chanting Hare Krishna, the tears of love will come flowing down my face, you see. He is feeling that now my heart is steel framed. There is no feelings of love when I chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and Naratam is lamenting. Naratam skarbi. Hadi hadi dipale janamo konainu. He is lamenting that, oh Lord Hari, I have uselessly wasted my life. To is skarbi, oh Gospodi Hari, as na prazno propilak života si. I did not care for Radha Krishna. And in this way I have knowingly drunk poison. So he is feeling great 
separation from pure devotional service. Actually, Naratam is pure devotee. But he is showing example for fallen rascals like us. That is his kindness. We fallen rascals. He is showing us how to purify our hearts. <laughs> to feel this separation from pure devotional service and to intensely hanker when oh when will that day be mine so Arjuna is very much uh, lamenting and hankering for the darshan of Krishna the gopis are very much lamenting and hankering the darshan of Krishna Narada Muni also he had one brief darshan and he was always hankering when will I again see my Lord so this mood of hankering for that pure Krishna Bhakti this is the most important thing we all must cultivate we have to strive for pure devotional service Prabhupada personally instructed me like that as I mentioned I was previously a songwriter so when I joined this movement I was asking Prabhupada some advice about writing Krishna conscious song. And Prabhupada was very kind and merciful to me. He told me how I could become qualified to write songs on the level of Bhakti Vinatakur. It's a pretty high standard, though. Here's what he told me. He said, now you disqualify yourself to see Krishna face to face. That's what he told me. And then I'd be qualified to write songs like Bhaktivinoda. So Prabhupada was pushing me <coughs> to come to that point of well, completely pure bhakti where I can see Krishna face to face. And I realized that actually that instruction is more 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 is is more special than the idea of writing some song. To become a pure devotee who can actually see Krishna face to face is more important than anything else you could even dream about. I, was, I wrote Prabhupada thinking about songwriting, but he gave me some he gave me, gave me a lot more than I had asked for. He ordered me to become a pure devotee. There's a similar, this reminds me of a pastime that my god brother Guru Kripa Prabhu had with Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> that time Guru Kripa Prabhu was the temple president. He was a sannyasi at the time. He was temple president of Hawaii Temple. Honolulu. So Prabhupada was up in the middle of the night, he was translating. So he sent, uh, he called for Guru Pripa. They woke him up and brought him in to, to see Prabhupada in the middle of the night. 
доведоха за да се види с първо път посред нощта. Now he's a very, very hard working devotee. Той е един правилно дан, който работи много, много усилено. He's very austere and hard working. Много отречен и много uh, работлив. He's not inclined to waste his time sleeping. Той не е склонен да си губи времето в сън. But still some sleep is required so he was taking his rest at night. Но разбира се, тъй като има нужда от някакъв сън, той си почиваше през нощта. And Prabhupada chastised him. Why you are sleeping? И Апрабхат му се скара. Защо спиш? He said, Prabhupada, I'm working hard. I need some rest. He says, and Prabhupada said, but I'm not sleeping. Why are you sleeping? И той каза, но Прабхат, аз работя много силен и имам нужда от почивка. И Прабхат му казал, но аз не спя. Ти, ти защо спиш тогава? He said, well, well, you're a pure devotee, Srila Prabhupada. I'm, you know, I'm a conditioned soul. I'm, I'm a pure devotee. And Prabhupada said, why are you not a pure devotee? Той каза, но Прабхат, ти си чист прена на дан. Аз съм една обословена душа. И тогава Прабхат каза, защо не си чист прена на дан? He severely chastised him for not being a pure devotee. И той много така сурово му се скарал за това, че не е чист прена на дан. And in this way, he... This Guru Kripi has somewhat of a fighting uh, nature, so Prabhupada stimulated him to the point where he became very angry. And Prabhupada just totally smashed him. And then Prabhupada then, then Prabhupada uh, Then Prabhupada told him a Krishna story and he said, okay, now go, go back to sleep. <laughs> so the point is that Prabhupada does want us to become pure devotees. Do you think Prabhupada wants us to remain neophytes? Struggling with our senses? Eating, sleeping, mating and defending. You think that's what he wants? He wants us to become sadhus, true sadhus. He told our devotees in Vrindavan, he said, if you become very nice, uh, clean, nice Vaishnava, The, the, when the bridge of Asi is offer you respect by saying Jai Radhe or Hare Krishna, then they will make advancement just by giving respect to you. So Prabhupada wants us to be like that, to be such very nice uh, Vaishnava Uh, sadhus, that anyone who respects us will automatically receive Krishna's blessing just by being respectful to us. So we should not be rogues and ruffians, gundas. We should become very nice uh, devotees of allure with all saintly qualities. This is a very, very important thing. We have to have wonderful, sweet, loving relationships amongst <coughs> ourselves. <coughs> We should become very expert at resolving any conflicts that we have amongst ourselves. So that we can associate together as one very nice, peaceful, loving family. That astrologer said that. He said, this man has built a house in which the whole world can live peacefully. Както един астролог е казал за Прабхупат, този човек може да построи къща, в която целият свят да живее мирно. And Prabhupad heard that he said, yes, that is my mission. И Прабхупат чул това и казал, да, това е моята мисия. 
So Prabhupada's mission is this Iskan house should be a place in which the whole world can peacefully live. So that means we cannot fight amongst ourselves. If we cannot live peacefully in this house, how are we going to invite the whole world to come and live with us? I don't mean this building. <coughs> I mean the ISKCON, the movement ISKCON. That is the house. It's obvious that everyone in Sofia cannot live in this house. There's not enough space. And we want that everyone in Sofia should become a part of this ISKCON family. So we have to have ideal dealings between each other. That's so. Because in this world, people may make a show of being nice. But they always have some motive. I'll scratch your back if you scratch my back. There's always some motive. Oh, that my dear girl, you're so beautiful. Let us make love. But then, as soon as I'm tired, oh, you're trash. Get out of here. So the so-called love of this material world is simply cheating and exploitation. Actual love comes when we make Krishna the center. And as we were discussing the other day, the the actual nature of a living being is to love God. If we do not love God, we're, we can't even be ourselves. Sometimes people complain, they say, oh, this Hare Krishna, it's a brainwash cult. You Hare Krishna people, stay away from me because I don't want to be polluted by your brainwash cult. But actually our philosophy is a very simple thing. <coughs> If someone asks you what is your philosophy, you can tell them this. Our philosophy simply is know who you are. And be who you are. That's all we're really saying. Know who you are and be who you are. That's Hare Krishna philosophy in a nutshell. My dear sir, we simply want you to know who you actually are. That's all we really want to do. And then once you have that gyan, that knowledge, atma gyan, the knowledge of what the self is, then we want to teach you how to be who you are. Atma vigyan. That's all we're saying. Know who you are and be who you are. So what sane gentleman would refuse to be interested to know who he actually is? If I told you, my dear sir, Right now you have a false understanding of who you are. And because of that false understanding you are unnecessarily suffering in so many ways. I have been blessed by a great spiritual master. 
Аз бях благословен от един велик духовен учител. With the knowledge of, of, what, of what is of, of who you actually are. Знанието за това кой действително си ти. And I'm prepared to tell you who we actually are. Аз съм готов да ти кажа кой действително си ти. This knowledge that I have, my dear sir, is more valuable than what's your currency here? Leva. Leva? It's more valuable than 10 billion levas. И това знание, което съм готов да ти дам е по-ценно от 10 милиона, милиарда лева. But I am prepared to give it to you today absolutely free. Но аз съм готов да ти го, да ти го предложа, ти го дам днес напълно безплатно. My teacher gave it to me for free. Моето учител ми го даде безплатно. And I am prepared to give it to you today absolutely free. Я съм готов да ти го дам абсолютно безплатно днес. Would you be interested to hear this knowledge? Интересуваш ли се да чуеш това знание? Any gentleman would say yes, please tell me. Всеки джентълмен ще каже да, моля те, кажи ми. And then we can explain to them. И тогава ние можем да му обясним. The transcendental nature of the self. Трансценденталната природа на себе си. And its relationship with the supreme self. И неговата връзка с върховното себе. And how there must be harmony. И как трябва да има да съществува хармония. The supreme self is sometimes described in the Sri Ishopanishad as the complete whole. Понякога върховното себе се описва както пише Панишат като пълното цяло. So this is another way we can explain Vaishnava philosophy. И това е един друг начин по който може да обясниме Вайшнава философия. Our philosophy is that there is the complete whole. Нашата философия е че съществува пълното цяло. And there are the parts of the whole. Съществува също така части от цялото. You take any unit and you analyze the relationship between that unit and its parts. Съмете всяка всяка единица и анализирате връзката на тази единица с нейните части. And you will see that the unit the part is meant to serve that unit, that complete whole. И тогава ще видите че частта е предназначена да служи на на цялото, на пълното цяло. Just like on your body, the hand is meant to serve the whole body. Както във вашето тяло, ръката е предназначена да служи на цялото тяло. In the automobile, the, t- <coughs> the tire is meant to serve the automobile. В един автомобил гумата е предназначена да служи на автомобила. If the tire is not, it goes flat and is not serving the whole automobile. Ако гумата спадне и не служи на целия автомобил, you must either repair it or replace it. Трябва или да я поправите, или да я смените. So, when the part is not functioning properly, it requires repair. И ако частта не функционира правилно, тя има нужда от поправка. Because the part is always meant to serve the complete whole. Защото предназначението на частта е винаги да служи на пълното цяло. So, any sane man can understand that I am part of a whole which is much greater than myself. И всеки... Разумен човек може да разбере, че аз съм част от цяло, което е много по-велико от мен. Only a complete lunatic would say, no, I am the complete whole. Само един пълен лунатик ще каже, не, аз съм пълното цяло. That's called Maya Vadi. I am God. Аз съм Бог. You know that Maharaj Vena, he said that. Не знаете, Maharaj Vena, той казал, The Brahmins, they were worshipping Vishnu. He said, you Brahmins, you stop to worship Vishnu. He says, you do not know who I am. I am God. Той каза на Брахманите, които обожавали Вишну. Вие Брахмани спрете да обожавате Вишну. Обожавайте мен. Знаете ли кой съм? Аз съм Бог. So only a madman will declare that he is that complete whole. Само един мут човек би обявил, че той е пълното цяло. So every part is meant to serve the whole of which it is a part. И така всяка част е предназначена да служи на цялото, на което е част. And since we are part and parcel of we are obviously part and parcel of a complete whole much bigger than ourselves. частици неразделно свързани с едно пълно цяло, което е много по-голямо от нас. Then we are naturally meant to serve that complete whole. 
И ние по естествен начин трябва да служим на това полиция. That relationship of servitude between the part and the whole is a harmonious relationship. Този взаимоотношение на служене на частта към цялото е взаимоотношение на хармония. When the part is not serving the complete whole, that is called a disharmonious relationship. Когато частта не служи на пълното цяло, това е дисхармонично взаимоотношение. So every living being is meant to be in a state of harmony with the complete whole. Всяко едно живо същество е предназначено да бъде в хармония с пълното цяло. That is the simple solution for all problems for the individual being. If that individual being can be in a state of harmony with the complete whole, then all of his or her problems will be totally eradicated. Ако индивида е в хармония с пълното цяло, това е простото разрешение на всички проблеми на този индивид. Our foolishness in the modern day society is we try to be happy, we, we remain in a state of disharmony with the complete whole, at the same time by making so many adjustments we try to be happy. Проблема на съвременната цивилизация е, че ние оставаме в дисхармония с пълното цяло и въпреки това правим много аранжименти да се опитаме да бъдем щастливи. This is artificial. You cannot be in a state of disharmony with the complete whole and be happy. It's not possible. You may fool yourself for some time by indulging in sense gratification. But sense gratification doesn't really satisfy you. If you're hungry and you stick your chowder in a bowl of soup, will that satisfy you? Ако човек е гладен и си натопи чадъра в купа с супа, това ще го удовлетвори ли? No, this you have to put the soup in your mouth. Човек трябва да си сложи супата в устата. So why are we so foolishly putting, spending all this energy for sense gratification? Защо толкова глупо ние хабим енергията си на сетина на сушта? The body is not, has nothing to do with us, actually. Or thinking, if I, can just give the, if I can just give this body some sex pleasure, or some tongue pleasure, then I can be happy. But I can tell you that nobody ever became happy by sex indulgence. The more you indulge in sex life, the more you become a miserable person. That's a fact. Колкото повече човек се ангажира в сексуалния живот, толкова по нещастен става той. Therefore, in Vedic culture, sex life is given up. Затова в ведическата култура сексуалния живот се изоставя. Everyone gives up sex. Всички изоставят sex. For brahmachari, there is no sex. За brahmachari няма sex. For sanyasi, there is no sex. За sanyasi също няма sex. For vanaprasa, there is no sex. And for Grahasta, it's give it up as soon as possible. For everyone, the program is how to get rid of sex. One day, our Sarup Damodar um, was with Srila Prabhupada on Venice Beach in Los Angeles. And he was playing the role of a scientist in his discussion with Srila Prabhupada. Because Prabhupada had said that he Prabhupada said the position of the sex, that how nasty it is. So Sarup Damodar said, but how to continue the species. Prabhupada didn't accept that argument that we have to continue the species, therefore we have to have sex for the sake of continuing the species. He didn't accept that argument. He immediately replied, you finish it, this condemned world. So we don't have any obligation to keep keep the population going. It's not necessary. 
населението. Това не е необходимо. Godhead, nice. Ако всички ние се върнем обратно в къщи при Бога, това ще е много добре. But if someone feels that desire to have children, that is okay. Then make them pure devotees of Krishna. Но ако някой чувства това желание да има деца, тогава нека да ги направи чисти правилно дани на Кришна. Бхакти Сиданта Сарасвати Дакур said he was prepared to have sex 100 times if he could produce Krishna conscious children. Шил Бхакти Сиданта Сарасвати казва, че той е готов да има секс 100 пъти, ако е сигурен, че ще произведе Кришна осъзнати деца. The point is we have to cultivate pure devotional service because only that will satisfy us. Но това което ние трябва да направим е да култивираме чисто правилно служене, защото само то може да удовлетвори. Anything we do which does not help us to come to the point of pure devotional service is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam as shrama eva hi kevalam което не може да ни, не ни помага да се издигнем до точката на чисто правилно служене е описано в Шимат Бхагава там като Шарама Евах и Кева. A useless waste of time. Или а, безполезна загуба на време. So we should target all of our thoughts, all of our words and all of our deeds for achieving pure devotional service as soon as possible. Шиши Джаганат Валадей Висвабадра така че ние трябва да насочим всичките си думи, мисли и действия към постигане на чисто правилно служене. So, are there any questions? Има ли някакви въпроси? Yesterday, when you uh, departed from the other center that was, uh, in the city, uh, you, you you asked how is uh, thank you in Bulgarian, and uh, then uh, he realized that this word in Bulgarian, uh, blagodarya, it's uh, uh, consists of two two words, uh, blago, which means uh, uh, something good, auspicious, and darya, which means uh, to give, and uh, that in this way you help him, help him uh, after so many years to realize the, the meaning of this word. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. The mood of giving. If you really feel thankful, then you will give something. That's right. That is the that is stated um, that not you, you should not take the knowledge and the spiritual master gratis. You must give some service also. If you actually feel gratitude or thankfulness, then you will give. That's why Krishna says, Tadvadi Pranipatena Pariprashnena Sevaya. You give service. Yes, that is thankfulness when you give service. Истинска благодарност е когато получиш нещо, например, знание от духовния учител, да не го приемаш гратис, а да си готов да се отблагодариш с служене, както се казва Бхагавадгита. So this Madhuji here had one her hand up. When you arrived, you, uh, she asked you about uh, to, to tell something about Vaishnava etiquette, if you remember in the beginning. And uh, 
and you explain many many things during the lectures. But yeah. and, uh, today she is asking if you can give her some uh, practical uh, exercise. exercise how to. Yes, bowing down. The se the Bowing down, bowing down, bowing down. No, we don't know the sepakwanish. That's the uh, that if you want to become expert in Vaishnava etiquette, then you have to keep bowing down to the Vaishnavas. <coughs> bowing down with your mind. Bowing down with your words. And bowing down with your body also. The more you can always bow to the, down to the Vaishnavas, then you become decorated with all transcendental qualities. Always see, always find out, always be looking for ways that you can offer more respect, more worship, more appreciation of the devotees. The more you can give that respect, then you become all uh, recognized by Krishna, recognized by Srila Prabhupada, recognized by the Vaishnava. Never be envious of the devotees. If you see that some devotee has some quality that you do not have, and you feel envious that he has that quality but I do not, and instead of being envious that, oh, he has something I do not, <coughs> you worship and appreciate that devotee for that quality he has. And by worshipping and appreciating him for that quality, then the amazing thing is that quality then will become your property also. И оценявайки това качество и служики на този правил данен, удивителното нещо е, че това качество ще стане и твоя собственост също така. So there's no reason to be envious. Така че няма причина човек да завижда. One time when I was a young brahmachara, I learned the hard way how to, what, about being envious. It was a very painful lesson. Едно време, когато бях млад брамачар, аз научих по трудния начин урока за това I will tell you the story. I was in the Pittsburgh temple and Prabhupada was in the temple in his room. And I was very much wanting to have his darshan. His room was on the second floor. So I was up on the third floor looking down the stairs and all the people who were going in and out of his room. And I was just sitting there very envious. So this person is going in his room. That person is going in his room. I was so disturbed. Instead of doing my normal service, you see, I was sitting up there on the third floor looking down at the door to Prabhupada's room. So envious that all these devotees are getting going, going in for Prabhupada's darshan. And I never got that darshan that day. But then I found out that all the devotees who were on the first floor doing their normal service, the secretary came down and said, Prabhupada wants everyone's darshan, everyone come in. So all the devotees had gone in for darshan except for me. Because I was sitting up there in a mood of envy that ah, they are going, I'm not going. But if I just done my service and not been in anxiety, I would have gone for Prabhupada's darshan. So the point is you should never never let envy just take over your mind. Just do your service very nicely and all facility will be there. 
If we become envious, then Krishna will hold us back from making progress. And envy is the biggest enemy on, in Vaishnava dealings. If it's envy that got us here to begin with, we were envious of Krishna. Why Krishna should be God? Why can't I be God? And Krishna said, all right, if you really want to be God, I'll let you be God. I have a wonderful place to send you where you can think that you're God. Sofia, Bulgaria. <laughs> so we have to give up this envious attitude. <laughs> Otherwise we will remain here in Sofia forever. <laughs> <laughs> Next question? Yeah. <laughs> Krishna предимно присъства в Риндаван. Или преди всичко. Не мога точно да дума. Какво означава това? Дали има някаква разлика? Дали има разлика? Как го разбирам? You mentioned in the beginning of the class that Krishna never takes a step away from Vrindavan. And uh, he, he read in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya something like... Uh, that Krishna is uh, mostly in Vrindavan. I, is there any difference in how, how to understand? It's the same thing. Krishna is always in Vrindavan or he's mostly in Vrindavan or he's sometimes in Vrindavan. It's actually all the same. It's all Lila. Krishna never leaves or you can say he leaves um, but that is externally he externally only externally does he ever leave in that Krishna никога не напуска и дори ако напусне изглежда че напусне това е само външно така изглежда той никога не напуска It is called rasa or taste Това се нарича раса или вкус it simply increases the taste that's all, of Krishna's, of associating with Krishna Vrindavan. Just like um, when a boy is in love with a girl, um, they have very uh, enjoyable times when they are together. But when they are separated, they write love letters. And the love they express in those letters is much stronger than any love they ever expressed when they were together. So it is a bitter sweetness. Just like in chocolate, there are two kinds of chocolate. There is sweet chocolate and there is bitter sweet chocolate. But actually bitter sweet is more tasty than sweet. So Krishna is apparently leaving Vrindavan or is mostly, you know, sometimes being at it. This is simply increases the sweetness of Krishna's Leela. Stated, familiarity breeds contempt. If Krishna is always in Vrindavan, they, they may, the bridge Vasis may take it for granted. Krishna 
we have a stronger desire for that thing which we cannot get than that thing that we easily get. So therefore, to increase the hankering of the Vrijavasis for Krishna's darshan, he apparently leaves Vrindavan. But by, because their love is so strong, especially the gopis, Love is so powerful. Krishna is captured within their hearts. The gopis can to- cannot tolerate a, a moment of Krishna's separation. Therefore, Krish- they, ke- they keep all those pastimes by their lila smaranam. They keep all of those pastimes of Krishna going on in their heart. Questions more? What is the role of the vows in spiritual life and what are the auspicious vows we have to, to take, undertake? The all-important vow, of course, is the vows taken when you accept initiation. No illicit sex, no meeting, no intoxication, no gambling, and chant 16 rounds at least every day. Those are the most, those are the most important vows. You should never make a vow that will stand in between doing your the, the duties that you're assigned by by Guru and by your authorities. You should never make a vow that well I can't do that Guru Dev because I have a vow. No. We should make vows that are conducive for complete total surrender to Guru and Krishna. Vows are very good, but we have to make the proper vows. If I make a vow that, that stands in the way of doing my service, then that is not good. Like I make a vow that you know, I will study scriptures for eight hours a day. Then how will I go to the Ratha Yatra festival? So you have to make your vows in an intelligent way. It will be conducive for your devotional service. But the principle of making vows is very good. You have to stick to your vows also. Don't make vows whimsically. Make, make vows intelligently that will enhance your advancement in Krishna consciousness. Someone makes a marriage vow. What happens? Marriage vow is very good. When the husband wants to go somewhere else and the spiritual master wants something else. So the one is uh, makes a marriage vow and the spiritual master and the husband are saying two different things. Before marriage, you should make sure you will get a husband who will support your relationship with your spiritual master. 
преди човек да се омъжи, трябва да е сигурен, че а, а, съпруга, който получава, ще подкрепи връзката му с духовния учител. Question, Mark. There are many stories in Chaitanya Charitamrita when Lord Chaitanya feels separation from Krishna and it is described that uh, in this mood he, he, he loses it, external consciousness and then it says that he, he comes to his senses after, after some time. And uh, apparently this is, uh, in Lord Chaitanya's case, coming to his senses is not something material platform. So what, what is it? Yeah, it is not material, yes. So what's the question? Uh, what, what is... Uh, sometimes he is in internal consciousness and then he comes back to external consciousness. Yes. What is his external consciousness, actually? Uh, well, you can serve Krishna in this material world or you can serve Krishna in the spiritual world. His external consciousness does not mean that he is within the external energy. It's like Prabhupada would lose external consciousness sometimes also when he would chant Jai Radha Madhava. He would go deep into spiritual trance. And then he would come back to external consciousness, but it's not external consciousness in the sense of the external energy. Prabhupada was always within the internal energy, whether it was internal, internal, or external, internal. So you you must become always absorbed in the internal energy. Whether you're externally within it or internally within it, you should be eternally within the internal energy. Questions more? Yes. In the, in the verse uh, the Draupa is uh, called uh, Krishna is almost the same as the word Krishna so he uh, he says that uh, the name of Krishna is surcharged with all spiritual energy so uh, this uh, slight difference in the name what, what, does, what does it mean it's, uh, is it also potent like, The name of any pure devotee is potent. Especially an eternal associate of one of these great eternal associates. Whether we say Draupadi or Krishna, it's it's Krishna and Krishna. It's a difference. It's a, her name is very, very powerful and potent. Her name will deliver you from the cycle of birth and death. Нейното име на Драупади, което е Кришна, е много, много могъщо, да, да може също да ни освободи от цикъла на раждането и смъртта. Махаджина, Йена, Гата, Сапанта, но не променяйте вашето джапа. 
Но, но не дайте да променяте своята джапа. Хари Кришна, Хари Кришна, 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 Хари Хари, Хари Кришна, not Кришна. Keep it, keep your japa as Krishna, not Krishna. Don't concoct some new system. In India, somebody left ISKCON and they started a new movement. They call it the Nittai Garanga movement. They say that chanting Nittai Garanga is more powerful than chanting Hare Krishna, so you should chant your beads, Nittai Garanga, Nittai Garanga, Nittai Garanga on your japa beads. But Nittai Garanga said we should chant Hare Krishna, so why don't we obey them? And obey Srila Prabhupada. So yes, the name Krishna is very potent, but don't substitute it in the Maha Mantra for Krishna. Questions, Mara? Very often we hear in lectures that Krishna is independent and uh, he does not depend on the quantity of our service he, can, he may not manifest himself if he doesn't want to. And, uh, but simultaneously we know that Prabhupada said that whoever stays in his uh, through his whole life then Prabhupada uh, guaranteed that he, he, will, he will give Krishna to this person. And we know also that uh, Krishna comes by the mercy of the spiritual master. <laughs> Does this mean that if, if we simply stay in this then because of the promise of Shri Prabhupada, then, then we'll get Krishna? Yes. No? <laughs> You stay here, follow you you remain in this society your whole life, dedicated to following the vows of initiation, your sixteen vows, four principles, you will definitely achieve perfection. So we thank you all very much. We'll stop here. Kantara Chimat Bhagavatama ki jai. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Sangasana Prabhu ki jai. Iskan Sophia Vaishnavas ki jai.